you're welcome to the Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Popularly known as the Easter Sunday. You're welcome. Our prayer is that the Lord will visit you wherever you are. Amen. That the name of Jesus Christ will be glorified. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God is so good. All the time. You know, it's an honor for me to share this word to us today. And the text is taken from the book of Mark. 16, I'll be reading from verse 1 to 7. The King James Version of the Bible. Is what I'll be using to read. And when the Sabbath was passed, that means it was the beginning of the of the of the of, of, of the of the week, a Sunday, if I would say. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint Jesus. Anoint him. Last two. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? And when they looked, they saw the stone was rolled away, for it was very good. And entering into the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. And he said unto them, Be not affrighted, you seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified, say, He is risen. He is not here, behold, the place where they laid him. But go your way, tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There you shall see him as he said unto you. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. You know, I gave it a title, He is risen, because actually that is what we are celebrating. Amen. And that is what we are in today. This is the Resurrection Day, the Resurrection Sunday. And it's a Resurrection Sunday because He is risen. There's no better title than to give it, He is risen. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, when we are looking at this passage, you know, the Bible says that when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salem, have brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him, anoint Jesus. Now you backtrack and go backward. You see, you understand that Jesus has been crucified and he has been buried in a tomb. And the Bible recorded that a big stone was used to cover this tomb. The tomb, sorry. And not only that a big stone was used to cover the tomb, also there were security agents manning the tomb such that the disciples, as they said, would not come and steal the body and declare that Jesus has risen, has risen as he was prophesied, as he was proclaimed in the scripture. So on that faithful Sunday, on that faithful resurrection day, the Bible said there were three in here. We saw three women. And they went with sweet spices. And one thing I want you to understand is that as they went with those sweet spices, mind you that the man that the man that read the man that got the tomb was a very rich man. 
And for them to have buried Jesus, there would have been spices that would have, it would have been embalmed. And remember, there was a woman that poured a perfume, and Jesus recognized that it was for his burial. But they came with other spices. The love for Jesus drove them, and they came that very early in the morning after the Sabbath to make sure that they put sweet spices. Is that like that was sweet spices? It wasn't a bitter one. Mm. It was something sweet. It was something nice. It was something very good and very expensive. But the Bible didn't tell us the expense or the cost of the spices. But the Bible recorded that it was sweet. Yes, yeah, sweet. And as they were coming with the passion and the love of God, they came near to that place. One thing that struck them was that the stone that was used to cover the tomb was so big. I don't think they realized, they remembered that they, there were agents, there were security men to stop people from coming, but they were determined to go and make sure they rolled the stone, regardless of those that were men in the body. You see, there was no fear in them. There was a passion to do something for Christ. Mm. And my prayer today, as we are looking at the Resurrection Sunday, is that the passion to work for God, the passion to serve God, the passion to do things for Jesus will overwhelm you so that the fear, the obstacles will not be in front of you. Because they didn't see the obstacle as they prepared the spices. It was as they were nearing there, they realized that there were people there, there were stones there. But even the men and the security men were nothing to them. To Fear was not there. The Bible tells us that fear covers a multitude of the love of God covers a multitude of sins. And perfect love casts out all fear. So when you see the perfect love that they had for Jesus removed and drove away the fear in them. But the one they were afraid, who would do the work of ruling out way in this thing? You know, sometimes when you are moved by the Spirit of the Lord to do something for Jesus, you don't think about the obstacle. And as you continue to go, the Lord will roll away the stones that might be the obstacle. Because as they went there, the Bible says, verse 3, as they said among themselves, who shall roll away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? Imagine three women going without any consultation with any man or strong man that will go and roll away the stone. As they were nearing the sepulchre, they were determined, they said, oh, we remember there was a stone there the other day. Who will roll away the stone? But I believe the Bible says that before we even think that he has said, before we open our mouth that he has said, God has already heard their prayer and he has already fulfilled what their fear would have been if there was fear in them. The Bible says in that verse 4, and they looked and they saw the stone that was rolled away for it was very great. As they came, they saw that the stone had been rolled away. And the Bible recorded that it was very great. You know, my prayer today is that every stone standing in the way of your ministry, standing in the way of your passion, standing in the way of your business, standing in the way of anything that you have desired, your relationship, that before you even think about it, that Jesus today, as he is risen, that he will roll away the stone. I declare that those stones are rolled away. Amen. Because as they were going, wondering who will roll away the stone, the Bible said they looked and they saw that the stone had already been rolled away. Every stone standing in the way of your now and breakthrough, let that stone be rolled away in the name of Jesus. Amen. As the angels rolled away the stone, Amen. let the angels roll away the stones Amen. that stand in the way of your breakthrough. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. He said, verse 4, and they said, verse 4, and when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away. 
for it was very great. You know, the Bible tells us that with God, nothing shall be impossible. That all things are possible to them that believe. As they went there, the Bible recorded that the stone had already been rolled away. Verse 1. And entering into the sepulchre, the Bible says they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. You know, when you look at this, the three women, if I look, if I count it right, the Bible didn't say there were others. It recorded these three in Mark. The stone had been rolled away. The obstacle had been taken away. The security men had gone. Who? But the Bible didn't tell us what made them to disperse. Could it be when the stone, when the angels were rolling away the stone, that fear came upon them and they had to run for their lives? You know, I believe that even as we declare the resurrection Sunday today, as we proclaim this resurrection Sunday, as we declare that Jesus is risen, I want you to declare that every stone, every security man, every strong man that stands in the way of your now and breakthrough, that by the power of the Holy Ghost, that the angels of God will go forth and drive them away with fear. Begin to declare it in the name of, begin to speak it for your life. Begin to declare for that in the name of Jesus. Every, every strong man, every stone that stands between my now and breakthrough. Thank God, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let them be rolled away. Let the fear of God drive them away in the name of Jesus. Let the angels of God, let them go forth to roll away. And to frighten those security men, those strong men. Let them be driven away in the name of Jesus. You know, here we are saying that instead of them, they were afraid. But I believe that the fear was because the angels are frightened. The security agents and they've already dispersed. Because they should have been here manning the stone. They should have been here manning the tomb. They should have been here making sure that no one took the body of Jesus as they were instructed. But let's continue. Hallelujah. Verse 6, verse 5. He said, And entering into the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. Verse 6. And he said unto them, Be not affrighted, you seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified, he is risen. He is not here. Behold, the place where they laid him. I want us to declare that he is risen. He is risen. Jesus is risen. Jesus is risen. You know, this is the key, and this is where we are going to share today. The Bible says that the angel that was sitting inside the tomb, inside the, inside the tomb, at the right side, he saw those two, three women, and he gave them a message to go that the person that they are looking for, they are looking for, has risen. He said, he is risen. He's no longer in the grave. He's no longer in the grave because he is risen. You know, today, when we're celebrating that he is risen, that Jesus is no longer and will never be in the grave, what are we celebrating? What is the purpose of this Easter Sunday? What is the purpose of the remembrance of today? That he is risen. You know, I was looking at the, the purpose, and that's why I had to share this. Because he is risen, it's a key. It's a word that God wants us to understand, that Jesus is risen. Amen. What is the significance? You see, he is risen. If I use, the, if I use my own term, I look at it as restoration. Because he's risen to restore us yes. to our place in God. Amen. 
If Jesus did not rise from the dead, we'll come to see what will happen. But I want us to look at Romans 4.25. Let's start from there. Why do we say that Jesus is risen? Romans 4.25, please. Who was, who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification? Praise the Lord. You know, we know that the scripture tells us that Jesus, when he died, he took our sin on his own body and nailed it unto the tree that we might die to sin and live unto righteousness. The Bible says, by his stripes, we were healed. So the Bible said in that Romans 4.25 that he was crucified for our sins and he was raised for our justification. So when you look at he is risen, we are declaring for many of us that have given our lives to Christ and for those that will give their lives to Christ today or every day they watch this, we are declaring that we have been justified before God. Because the essence of him dying, he's already died with our sin. But until he rises up again, we cannot rise with him. Because the essence of him rising shows that we will ourselves rise when we go back, when we sleep. So, the fact that Jesus died and rose from the dead, the Bible says we are now justified before God. Because he was raised for our justification. He was raised for us to be justified before the Father God. The blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross of Calvary became a prize for us at the place of death. But his rising became, he, he, he told them that he has overcome the power of sin and death. Because sin could not hold him. And the grave could not hold him. And he was raised from the dead that we ourselves will have the hope that one day that we will rise again. Amen. You know, here we say he is risen in that verse 6. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place that they laid him. You know, the Bible, everyone that, was, that has died from the time of Adam to today. You will go and you will see their body. Except few people that did not, we didn't know how they died. Enoch, we don't know how he went. Mm -mm. The Bible says that he walked with the Lord and he was found no more. Moses, we know that although the Bible said he should go up to the mount and die, but nobody buried him. It was God. And Moses. So that the end, those that the, the devil was contesting and looking for the body of Moses. And we know another person that we don't know. He didn't die, but he was cut off. Was Elijah. Mm. Apart from that. There's only one person that died and rose again. All those other people, they didn't rise again. Either they left without dying, but it was only Jesus that died and rose again. Hallelujah. And because he is the only one that rose, that rose again from the dead, he became. And he received the title, the firstborn. And when we look at him, we know that one day we will rise again. Amen. You see, as I'm looking at that, the, the benefits of Jesus rising from the dead is what we are using today. 
Okay. Let's look at Romans 8, verse 11. Okay. We'll still come back to this verse 6. Romans 8, 11. Please. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Praise the name of Jesus. Is it because Jesus rose from the dead? The Bible tells us and if that spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in us, that spirit that raised Christ from the dead will do what? Will quicken our mortal body. What does it mean to quicken our mortal body? We give life to our mortal body as because of that spirit that dwells in us. So it is as a result of his resurrection that today we can pray and ask the Lord to heal and to deliver us from the infirmities from the onslaughts of the wicked on our mortal body. Amen. And in him delivering us, he will give life Amen. to those things that are dying. Amen. And that's why we can say that someone is a dying, we declare that we command the dead body to rise to death, to rise to life Amen. because Jesus is alive. Amen. He is risen. Amen. He demonstrated it because he said Greater work shall you do because I go to my father. He raised Lazarus from the dead. He raised the man of name, the only son of a woman, a widow. So the Bible said, if that spirit that raised Christ, Jesus is risen, and that spirit that raised him, the Holy Ghost is in us. And I want to prophesy to you today, that that spirit that raised Christ from the dead, Amen. that spirit that raised Christ from the dead, let that spirit quicken every area of your life. Amen. Let everything that is about to die or that is dead, let them receive the life of God Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want us to look at another scripture. 1 Corinthians. 15. Let's just look at that 1 Corinthians 15, 13 to 17. Verse 13. But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty, and your faith is also empty. Yes, and we are found false witnesses of God. Because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he did not raise up. In fact, the dead do not rise. For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Praise the name of Jesus. You know, this is a discourse that Paul was sharing with the children with the people of Corinth. Even today, when you go out there to talk to people, especially some sets of people, all that says that don't believe in Jesus. Some would believe that he came and lived as a great man, as a great prophet. And those people would say that he never died. And some people would say that he was like any other prophet. And some people would just deny and say he's just a human being like any other person. That God is a miraculous God. He can do anything to anyone. But here, I want us to look at what Paul was saying. First of all, what is the gospel? The gospel is that a man by name Jesus Christ came to live as a human being through a virgin birth with no father but by the power of the Holy Ghost. That he lived here on earth without sin. That he died carrying our sin 
on his own body and nailed it. And he was nailed on the tree on the cross. And he was buried. That on the third day he rose again from the dead. And that is it. And that he lives forever. And here, in that verse 13 that we read, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 13, Paul was saying that if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. If Christ is not risen, then our preaching, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. <coughs> Paul was telling them, because there were many people saying that Jesus Christ did not rise. You remember, in the Bible, the Bible says that those that man the tomb, when there was an earthquake and the tomb opened and the Jesus, raised, Jesus rose from the dead, that those men went and told their agents, their, 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 their sponsors, their governors, that Jesus has risen. And something had happened. And they said they would pay them to lie. Imagine being paid to lie. And said they would defend them, even though they've been paid to lie. And many of us, I believe that this news was going around that Jesus did not rise from the dead. No. That he was stolen. But we know the truth. Because if he was stolen, then we know that he died. Because there are people that say he didn't die. There are people that say he didn't rise. There are two different things. But Paul was telling them and alluding to them that if Jesus did not rise from the dead, that means that the gospel is what? It's in vain. Because the complete gospel is that Jesus rose from the dead. So if Jesus did not rise from the dead, that means our gospel is in vain. It's a lie. And if our gospel, if you, if you didn't rise, that means our faith in Jesus is still lie. Because we cannot put our faith in someone that did not overcome death and grave. And I want you to understand that when you say you are a Christian, you are telling yourself that you have overcome the power of death yeah. and grave Amen. by the power that Jesus Amen. obtained on your behalf Amen. by rising and defeating the powers yeah. of death. And in that 15, he said, that means that our faith and our gospel is in vain. That's all 14. And in 15, he says that we are found of all, we are found for witness, false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up. Indeed, that Jesus, the dead, are not. The dead rise not. But it's a lie from the devil. Jesus rose. Amen. And if he did, assuming he did it, then we are now liars and we are making God himself a liar. The Bible said, let all men be liars, let God be true. In 16, he said, For if the dead rise not, then Christ is not risen. 17. But if Christ be raised, be not raised, your faith is in vain, and you are yet in your sin. I asked someone yesterday on the street, and I asked the person, What's the guarantee that if you die today, that you will go to the heaven? That you will meet the Father God. He said, because the God is the God of mercy. You know, mercy is about forgiveness. What is that powerful thing that will cause God to grant you mercy? It's only the blood of Jesus. It's only the work of the cross. It's only the fire the power and the belief and the understanding that Jesus rose from the dead. Because that's where the mercy comes. He, that's why he says he became sin that you might be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. God will grant you 
your mercy because you have accepted his work on the cross. And you have accepted that he rose from the dead. Amen. That you don't need to die yourself yeah. because he has died on your behalf. Yeah. Yeah. See, today we are celebrating that he's risen. And we are I want you to note that yourself that if you continue with Christ, that you don't need to die. Amen. Because he has taken your place on that cross. He has taken your he he he, he has beaten, he was killed gruesomely. He died a shameful death. Amen. He died a death that we cannot die. So regardless of the type of death that won my face tomorrow, Jesus covered it. Amen. You know, one thing is. Until we encounter Jesus in his fullness, or we encounter in his love, until we encounter in his mercy, death will become a torment unto oh, us. Oh, oh. Mm. But when we encounter Jesus and knowing that, like Paul said, to be with him will be better. But he said, to remain will be good for us because we're good for the people that were there because he needed to write some other epistles. If your work here on earth, it's not touching people. Mm. And my prayer is from today that we will know and we will work towards doing that which will touch, or touch lives. Which will take the name of Jesus round to everywhere we are. Let's look at verse 22 of this 15. He said, for as in Adam all died, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Hallelujah. Because he is risen. Why? Because Adam was the one that introduced sin into this life. He was the one that rebelled and disobeyed God and made the devil the God of this age. He was the one that introduced death. But Jesus came. The Bible said, as in Adam all die, as in Christ, all will live. Amen. It's a choice Thank you, Jesus. for us to live. Amen. It's a choice for us to be made alive. The Bible didn't say in Christ that all are all are all are all are all all are alive, but He said all will be made alive. So it's a choice for you to be made. The Bible says you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's a choice for you to know the truth and allow the truth to make you free. Here, the Bible says. As in Adam, all died. He said that not all would die. Everyone died in Adam. But as in Christ, all will be made. There is a process for you to be made alive. And that is by receiving and acknowledging the death and the resurrection of Christ. Hallelujah. By acknowledging that Jesus Christ is the Lord over Hallelujah. your life. By acknowledging that he has paid the price that you cannot pay. You see, the benefit that one or another benefit that we are looking at today is that in Christ Jesus, all will be made alive. It's a choice. It's a choice. I want us to look at 1 Peter 1 3. Can somebody help me? Yes. One Peter. One three. One Peter one verse three. Yes, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Praise the name of Jesus. Yes. He said, blessed be what? The God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
according to his great word. Love. Some says love, some says great mess. Mercy. Mercy. The, <laughs> according to his great mercy, mercy. he had <laughs> he caused us to be born again. You see, Jesus said on, when he was encountered by Nicodemus in the book of John 3, verse 8, he told Nicodemus, except one is born again, that he cannot enter what? Kingdom of God. And Nicodemus was asking, how can one enter? We won't go forth and be born of the mother. And Jesus was telling Nicodemus that he's been a great teacher. But he, doesn't, he, he didn't understand this. And he was telling him about the wind. That you hear the sound of the wind. You know there's a wind coming. But you don't know where it's coming from, where it's going. And he was telling Nicodemus. That as the way is, so is the one that is born. But in essence, he was telling me that you have to be born of the Spirit and of the Word. See, being born again is not about a natural birth. It's a spiritual birth. And the Bible says, according to God's great mercy, That mercy that he had, but he purchased unto us a living hope through our new birth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the hope we have today is that one day we will be with the God. Oh, one day, those things that were dark will become plain. One day, you'll be worshiping God. Not, not, not. One day, that you will be with Jesus, your master, worshiping him day and night. You, and that's the hope we have, the living hope we have. That we will see him face to face. Amen. See, when we say he's risen, we are telling ourselves, that God through Christ Jesus, in him being born again, in him being rebuilt, in him rising from the dead, he has purchased for us. He's caused us to be born again unto a living hope through that resurrection. There is hope as a child of God. Amen. And the Bible calls that hope living. Yes. Because it's never dead. Mm. It's never dead. Let me read it again. He said, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he had caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ Hallelujah. from the dead. Hallelujah. We are born again to a living hope. Through Jesus' resurrection. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. Somebody will ask you, what type of food now? Say it is living. Say I've been born, I've been born again, again to a living hope, to a living hope through, the through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, of Jesus Christ from, the dead. from the dead. Amen? Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Just two more scriptures. I move on to the next one. Can someone look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 14 for me? One Thessalonians four fourteen. Yes. Please. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. 
Praise the Lord. You know, this, this is going further to acclaim that not only us, but those that have already slept in the past, because of what Jesus did, he will cause them to rise again. Amen. And I want to read the last scripture before I move on to where, where, where the, mark, the mark that we're in. I want to look at Philippians 3.10. Paul was saying that he might know him and the power of what? His resurrection. And the fellowship of his suffering. That he might be made conformable unto his own death. Let me read 11. If by any means that he might attain the resurrection from the dead. You know, you cannot desire to know him. You cannot know him unless you understand and believe what he has done. He said the knowledge of Christ is what Paul was desiring. And that and he was desiring also the power of the resurrection, the dynamic power, the power that raised him from that day, the power that made all the sins of mankind to become nothing. The sins, the weight of the sin that held Jesus down, it was the power that removed it and caused Jesus to rise from the dead. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible said he took our own sin on his own body and was nailed to the tree. As he was nailed there, he was carrying our sin. And he was laid to die. It wasn't man that killed Jesus. He gave up his own, his own, his own life. You know, it was in, it, I, I was looking at it today and uh, this morning and yesterday and something came to me. The Bible said when the soldiers came to check whether they were dead, they, they, they broke the bones of the first two, the two people that were hanged with Jesus on the right and the left. But when they came to Jesus, they realized that he was already dead. But that's not what I'm saying. That's what the way I'm going. The Bible says one person used a spear and pierced the body. The Bible says that the blood and water gushed out. I want to say something. You know, immediately someone dies, the blood congeals and everything congeals. But they say that Jesus had died. This is a mystery. They still pierced the body. They said water and blood came out. Could it be? Could it be that dead could not? Dead could not. Even though he gave up his clothes. But cold, dead could not deal with him. That's why his blood never loses its power. Amen. That's why the blood of Jesus never lost his power. Even at death, his blood was still alive. I want us to go back to our scripture. Mark. Is that Mark 16? We've been on 6 that he is written. And some of the things that we have seen, this is not exhausting. We are seeing the restoration, the things that God restored to us through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are seeing some of the things, the benefits of Jesus having risen and the things that he gave to us. He gave us a power. The dynamic power. Hallelujah. Paul prayed that he might know him and the power of his resurrection. Amen. And sometimes, because the Bible says anyone that must live godly must suffer persecution. He also prayed that he might have a fellowship in his suffering. 
that he might conform unto his own death, unto his own death, death, sorry. You know, these are difficult prayers to pray. How can you pray that you be willing to conform to the way Jesus died? How can you be praying that you might enjoy the benefits, you might partake of his suffering? But this is a death that someone like Paul has entered into. And that is why persecution, tribulation, that Jesus said, if you must have to live godly, you must go through that. It doesn't affect those that have chosen to live for Christ. And it shouldn't affect us. I believe even now we should ask the Lord that we will die to self. And live unto him. Begin to pray. Ask Father God, give me the ability to die to my own desires, to my own needs, that I will live for you alone, and you alone, and you alone, in Jesus' name. Let's look at verse 7 of that Mark 16. The angel said to Peter, to the three women, Go your way, tell the disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There you shall see him. And he said unto them. You know, the angel gave a message to the woman that encountered the angel. I said, go and tell the disciples. Why was it that he told Peter? And I believe this is where we'll be closing. He mentioned Peter by name. You know, in the book of Luke, chapter 22, verse, verse 31 and 32. In 31, as Jesus was going through the process of being killed, of being crucified, he reminded Peter that Satan had sought, had a permission to sift him as we. To destroy him. You want to read it? Okay. 22. Luke 22. Verse 31. One. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. Mm -hmm. But I have prayed for you mm -hmm. that your faith should not fail. Should not and when you have returned mm -hmm. to me, strengthen your brethren. Praise the Lord. You know, if we are looking at this Resurrection Sunday, I want us to look at a man by name Peter that was working with Jesus. He was the lead of the disciples, if I might say so. And as Jesus was going, Jesus told Peter that Satan has sought, has requested, that he might sift him as we. And Jesus said that he has prayed for him. And when he is restored, when he is reconciled, and when he comes back, that he should reconcile and restore others. You know, this applies to each and every one of us. And for those out there that don't know Jesus, every day the devil is seeking to destroy any of, any of us. Every day the devil is seeking I want us to declare because as at that time they didn't have the power. But today the Lord has given us power. He said, whatever we allow here on earth will be allowed in heaven. And whatever we refuse here on earth will be refused in heaven. I want you to declare to every request from the pit of hell to, to sift you as we say, no, I reject it. I refuse it. Begin to declare in Jesus' name. I reject, I, reject. I, refuse. I refuse every request, every request from the pit of hell to, to afflict me, to sink me, me as we. 
In Jesus name. He said to Peter, the devil has requested to sift you as you may. He said, yeah, he had prayed and when he's restored, he didn't say that he won't go through the obstacle. He said when he's restored, that he should restore order. You know, there are many times we will miss the map by our own inclination and heartly desire. God, Jesus, is continually interceding on our behalf. And he's saying, when you are restored, that you should restore others. You know, 1 Corinthians, um, 2 Corinthians 1 verse 3 tells us that the God of comfort will comfort us in all our afflictions. And when we are comforted, the Bible says we should go forth and comfort others with the comfort that we have been comforted. Here, I want us to look at, I might not want us to read it, but you can read it at home. Matthew chapter 26. You can read it from, or, or, you can, or if anyone has it, let them read from verse 70 to 74. But he denied it. We read from 69, please. Matthew 26, 69. To, now, 74. to 74. Now Peter sat outside in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him, saying, You also were with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied it before them all, saying, I do not know what you are saying. And when he had gone out to the gate, where another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This fellow also was with Jesus of Nazareth. But again he denied with an oath. I do not know the man. And a little later, those who stood by came up and said to Peter, Surely you also are one of them, for your speech betrays you. Then he began to curse and swear, saying, I do not know the man. Immediately a rooster, a rooster crowed. Thank you. Thank you, my sister. You see, the, the devil requested for Peter to be saved. And Peter had to go through the process. In this Matthew 26, if you look at verse, 10, verse 70, as we read, the Bible said that, uh, 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 Jesus, uh, that, that the people asked, the lady asked Jair and declared and saw Peter and said that you are one of them. And the Bible said that Peter responded, that he didn't, doesn't know who Jesus was. He didn't know. He said, I don't know what you are saying. How many of us today, in the presence of our friends, would deny Jesus and say we don't know what we are saying? How many of us, because of political correctness, will refuse Jesus when Jesus is being mentioned or when you see people preaching Jesus and you tell your friends, I don't know what they're saying. Just for you to please others. How many of us out there that don't know Jesus yet, that are saying, we don't know what they're saying. Jesus wants you to know what they're saying. Yeah. He wants you to be one of his disciples. Yeah. In verse 7, verse 42, verse 72, the Bible said another question was posed to Peter that he was a disciple. And the Bible said he took an oath. You know, many people are fond of taking oath and swearing and saying that he doesn't, he didn't know Jesus. What is it that you are swearing about God? Saying you don't know him. They don't belong to him. The third one and the last one. The Bible said that he swore, he swore and cursed. How do I know him? He was using a swearing word and cursing. And many people out there, they are full of curses. And they are using the name of the Lord in vain. How many of us we say that we've sworn and we've denied Jesus with a curse, saying that we are not part of 
Even for those that are not part of today that they are swearing, Jesus wants to restore you. He said to Peter, when you are restored, that you should restore your brethren. God has restored me. Amen. God has restored me from Amen. my sins. Amen. I remember in my, in, my, in, my, in my younger days, if I see some people having fellowship, I will run. I choose not to be part of them. And how many of us are running away from the things of God? How many of us are running from being committed unto Jesus? This is a day that Jesus said, the Bible tells us, that Jesus died for our sin. And he was justified as he rose from the dead. And we are justified as we rose. If any of us will say, Evangelist Samson, Jesus, I want to make Jesus my Lord and Savior. I want my sins to be washed away. I want to live a life full of power because Jesus is risen. I want, my, I want to be reconciled as Peter was later reconciled to the Father God. If there's anyone here that will say, let today be my birthday of coming to Jesus. While all eyes are closed for people here, if there's anyone that will say, I want to reconcile to God. Peter was working with Jesus and he still, the devil sought to save him as well. Jesus was still there and he was denying Jesus with an oath, with a cursing word, with a swearing word, saying, I don't know what you are saying. If there are times you've done that, you need to come back to Jesus. For those watching me, if you have not made Jesus your Lord and Savior, if you have not asked him to wash away your sin with the blood of Jesus, if you are still living in sin, if you are still not sure that if you die today, that you won't rely on the mercy without the blood, today is the day to come back to him. Today is that day to come back because he wants to set you free. For many of us that are here saying, I want to give my life to Christ, stand up. And for you at home, stand up. Let's pray. Father God, repeat after me. Father God, Father God I, come to you. I come to you. In the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. I, receive I receive Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. As, my as my Lord and my Savior. And my Savior. I, believe I believe that he died, that he died and, rose and rose again today. I ask that the blood of Jesus will wash away my sin and make me a brand new person. Baptize me with your Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Let me just conclude this. Father Lord, we just want to thank you for those that have confessed you, Jesus, as their Lord and Savior. Father, I pray that you will keep them, that the enemy will not snatch them. That we will live with you eternally and be with you eternally. Father, we seal this prayer with the blood of Jesus. Baptize us with your spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah.